we want to use a triple integral to find the volume of the solid bounded by all of these equations. We have x equals 0, x equals 1, y equals 0, y equals 1, z equals 0, and z equals xy. Let's first take a look at this graphically. z equals xy is a graph of the blue surface. The yellow planes are given by the remaining equations. So notice how the bounded solid region is going to be this region here that is below the blue surface and above the xy plane over this square region in the xy plane. We can determine the volume of a solid using a triple integral as defined here. Well, the volume is equal to the triple integral over the region D, where the region D is the solid region we're trying to find the volume of, and then differential V using rectangular coordinates is equal to dz, dy, dx, or any of the six possible orders of integration shown here at the bottom. So our volume is equal to the triple integral, again over the region D, and then notice how the integrand function would just be one, and then we have differential V. And for our example, let's use the order of integration given by dz, dy, dx, as shown here. So the volume is going to be equal to the triple integral. The integrand function is one, and then we have dz, dy, dx. Now let's work on determining the limits of integration for x, y, and z. When we know that the solid is bounded below by the x, y plane given by z equals zero, and it's bounded above by the surface given by z equals x, y. So these will be the limits of integration for z. We integrate from zero to x, y with respect to z. And now for the limits of integration for y and x, it's helpful to find the x, y trace, which in this case is pretty straightforward. The x, y trace is the area bounded by x equals zero, x equals one, which should be this vertical line, this vertical line, as well as y equals zero and y equals one, which would be this horizontal line and this horizontal line here. And therefore this square is the x, y trace. And this will help us determine the limits of integration for x and y. And because we have a square or rectangular region, it's very straightforward. The limits of integration for y will be from zero to one. The limits of integration for x will also be from zero to one. So if we evaluate this triple integral, it'll give us the volume of the solid bounded by all of these equations. So let's evaluate this on the next slide. So we first integrate with respect to z. So the antiderivative is just going to be z. And now we need to find big F of B minus big F of A, which is just going to be x, y minus zero. So the new integrand function is just x, y. And now we integrate with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So the antiderivative is going to be x times y squared divided by two, or just one half x, y squared. And now we need to find big F of B minus big F of A. So when y is equal to one, we'd have one squared. And when y is zero, of course, we have zero squared. So the new integrand function is just one half x. And now we integrate with respect to x, so we'll have one half times x squared divided by two, or one fourth x squared. So we have one fourth times the quantity one squared minus zero squared. So the exact volume is one fourth cubic units. Or of course, as a decimal, we can write this as 0 0.25 cubic units. Which again, going back to the graph, would be the volume of this bounded solid below the blue surface over the square region in the xy plane. I hope you found this helpful.